Hey everyone, and welcome to The Outside Story. My name is Jonathan. I'm Jessica. And I'm Larry. And this month is Asian Pacific Islander American Heritage Month. APIA Heritage Month. And so for The Outside Story, since we are all Hmong American siblings, we decided that we want to do a podcast special where we're releasing podcasts every week. We're going to focus solely on the Asian American experience and Asian Americans in Hollywood. So for this particular podcast, we're going to be looking at two films. The first one is Better Luck Tomorrow that came out, I believe, in 2002. And then Soul Searching, which I don't remember when it came out. I think it was 2015 or 2016. I think it's 2015. Pretty recent. Yeah, pretty recent. So yeah, those are the two films that we're going to be taking a look at better luck tomorrow you can rent it online for about like three bucks and soul searching you could watch on netflix and so better luck tomorrow is a film about these group of asian american friends in high school um it's kind of a coming of age film kind of a high school film and kind of a like stereotype breaking sort of film this came out in 2002 and i was in high school at the time that it came out Do either of you remember this movie or, like, remember watching it? I was just talking to Jason about this, and I was thinking, how did I watch this film? I know I didn't go see it in the movie theaters. Pretty sure I didn't. But did mom and dad rent it for us? (laughs) I don't know. I I remember watching it with you, Jess. Right? Like, yeah, the both of us watched it. I don't remember where we got it, though, or how we got it. Because Jason's like, oh, maybe you got it online. I was like, no way. There's no way we no. had internet that like that to watch. <laughs> no. No, we didn't. It wasn't until Legally. I was... Yeah, we wouldn't download this film on, like, 56K, because that's what we were doing. <laughs> right? That's what we were on so, dial-up yeah, at the time. Yeah, there was no that way that we out. watched it on the internet. Most likely, we rented it. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah, sure I you guys rented, rented it, yeah. It. Because I'm pretty sure this is a rated R film, right? Yeah. Or at least PG-13. It has to be rated R because people have sex. Yeah, yeah, see, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. There's like a porno in the That's film. That's true. Okay, like yeah, that. so it's most yeah. likely rated R. And mom and dad wouldn't have, like, gone with us to go watch it. I think, but the thing about mom and dad, when we went to, like, Blockbuster, <laughs> we went to Blockbuster <laughs> to get the films, like, like they never really, like, double-checked it. Unless it was, like, a scary film, they wouldn't let us get it. That's you know? true. So most likely we rented yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want to say as well. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say we rented it. But Larry, you don't remember this film, right? Nope, not at all. <laughs> I don't remember I don't think we let you watch watch it because you were a lot <laughs> younger than us. I was like 10 years old when this came out. Yeah, yeah. so... I was way too young. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we let Larry watch, watch mm-hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then for Soul Searching, this one came out when I was... Around the time that I was in seminary and... Some of my pastors and some of my seminary friends were talking about it and just telling people how great of a film it was. And so I actually didn't watch it for like a year or two after it came out. But then when I watched it, I absolutely loved it and told everybody I knew to watch it, like watching it the second time. Like, it's just, I just love this film a lot. I I, I really like Soul Searching. Yeah. Have you guys heard about it or Um, heard anybody talk about it? For soul searching, no, I've never heard of it. I think maybe I've heard the name thrown out once or twice, but um, yeah, I've always seen it on Netflix though. Like when I when I still had pretty active Netflix subscription back around that time when it came out, like I, it kept popping up on my feed. I'm like, oh, it looks interesting, but I don't know. We'll see. One day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that, I, that was yeah. just the other day. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, I haven't heard of the movie until Jonathan you mentioned it, but I'm glad that I watched it finally, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, what were your um, first impressions? Let's let's first talk about Better Luck Tomorrow, and then we'll talk about Soul Searching. Um, what were your first impressions and, and or memories if you were watching it again for you, Jess? For me, I'm trying to think of when I first watched it when I was, what, 14? 14, 15, right? Yeah. Yeah, around there, 14, 15. And 
I thought, and it was made by MTV, which I thought was very groundbreaking, especially because growing up, we didn't see a lot of films like that with Asian Americans in it. I was like, yes, there mm-hmm. are Asians in that movie. That's so cool. I want to watch it. Those were, that was like my first thought. I remember when it like first came out. Yeah, I thought it was very true to the experience of like Asian Americans, especially in high school. I mean, not all of it, but like the academic side was very. <laughs> we don't get that crazy. No, but, you know. like that. I mean, I'm sure there are like Asian American oh, yeah, like totally. friends and like stuff totally. in high school that we went, to, uh, people in high school that we went to school with. Like there were people like that. But for the most part, like I could relate on the academic side of it. Yeah. Totally, yeah. totally. I thought it was a great film. It depicted the Asian American experience very well. For me at the time, like I said earlier, just groundbreaking to see Asian Americans on screen. And then mm-hmm. after that, I was like, yes, there's like Asian, pe- there's like this Asian American film. Like maybe there'll be more. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> there has been <laughs> nothing. Nada. Zip zilch. Nothing. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, watching when that first came out, I had really high hopes that you know more movies would be made but sadly there has there wasn't any after that right yeah right yeah when you guys told me about this i had no idea what it was but i've heard the title though i was like okay i'll check it out and it had some pretty good like names in it and so i I knew the actors like i know the actors now but i didn't know they were in this way back when i liked it a lot i was really impressed at just just the way (laughs) <laughs> just everything <laughs> it just it just <laughs> felt like it, it just felt so true to like um a, a lot of people i know and uh, a lot of things that um I, i've seen growing up and yeah i mean that's that's really it there's nothing else to really say i i enjoyed it a lot more than i thought i would have but yeah yeah mm-hmm. um for me first impressions this time around just you know how you said pen 15 was kind of like your yeah uh, like they reminded me reminded you of your experience, experience or yeah. whatever but i feel like better luck tomorrow reminded me of my experience except minus all the the, the drugs and the violence <laughs> like <laughs> i wasn't a gangster um you, mean you weren't cool enough you didn't nope, have another not, life a double you life you didn't play basketball did you didn't <laughs> nope nope i did not play basketball but you know like like that scene where he's like taking a test and the kid tries to cheat off of yeah. him yeah Oh my god, all the time. Like in high school, all the time. People it's so would like funny. people would steal my homework from me. It's like they would steal my homework and and copy it and then and then turn in both of our homeworks at the same time. That, I'm like, listen, so if you're gonna steal my homework, you got you can't put your homework right on top of mine because the teacher's gonna know that I let you cheat or whatever. So you got to like, you know, mix it together. Like I told this one girl one time, I was like, you ha- you can't put yours and mine right next to each other. If you're going to, if you're going to steal my homework, you need to, <laughs> like I just told her, I just told her straight up. Like if you're going to steal my homework, you need to separate the homeworks. Like you can't put it one right next to each other. People these days. Oh my gosh. Anyway. They're, they're amazing yeah. experience I had too in high school. It was my senior year. And granted, you know how the stereotype is, you know, Asians are all good at math or whatever. They're great at math. Um, Nope. (laughs) I am the one Asian that sucks at math. Okay. So my senior year, I didn't take like, what are you supposed to take senior year? You could take senior math, which is like literally anything. Yeah. But you can go up to to trig. Yeah. I didn't. I think I stopped like geometry. (laughs) Yeah. Pre-cal. Yeah. Yeah, You didn't go to pre-cal. No, I didn't go to pre-cal. I didn't do trig. I didn't do any of that because I sucked at math. Right. So for yeah. my senior year, I did business finance. <laughs> I did business finance also. <laughs> Which was the easiest class ever, right? And it's not, it's basically, it's not math. It's like real life stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, which, yeah real life situations. Yeah, which helped a lot, I feel like. Granted, some of my friends who are now doctors, I'm like, uh, you don't know how to do your taxes. That's <laughs> unfortunate. Um, anyways, but... This girl would, like, try to copy off of me. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I'm seriously not the right Asian (laughs) to copy off of. I'm like, you can totally (laughs) copy off of me, but you're probably going to get it wrong. And it ain't my fault because (laughs) you was dumb. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, People would always, like, copy off me and stuff. Like, it's it's because we kind of went to, like, a ghetto high school, too. If we went to a rich high school, like I bet you the kids would pay me to like, you know. Yeah, you would have got money to write essays. I would have got money. <laughs> yeah. Right. But we went to some get we went to a ghetto ass high school where nobody got money, so people just steal from each other and they stole my homework all the time. 
so annoying. That's crazy. But anyway, it just reminded me of that. That's funny. That was kind of my first impressions. Yeah. And also random, but they have like a slight like transatlantic a- accent <laughs> in the in the movie, and that bothered me a little bit. Do they? But we're not gonna go into detail <laughs> yeah, about that. It just it bothered me just a little bit. I didn't pay attention yeah. to that. Yeah, and then I guess now we can just dive a little bit deeper into the film. Were there any scenes that kind of stuck to you or struck you? Um, or just, like, if you want to talk about your experience and why why this film is important to Asian Americans or Asian American experience? For me, like, I, I loved that they pointed out how... Um, how Asian, Asian American, most Asian American students, like you, we are academically, we do well academically, right? Like a lot of us, Mm -hmm. we pursue and want to like do that, right? In school. And I liked that they showed that because most of the time we do want to do well. Not like that other students don't, but like for Asian Americans, it's always been like built into us, like from our parents, like, you know, get good grades, do well in school, blah, blah, blah. But on top of that, they also did like extracurricular activities and they're involved in sports and did all this stuff. But then they did like crazy stuff too. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. in most uh, teen high school films, a lot of, I guess, most I'm not I'm just going to say it. Like, a lot of it is, like, Caucasian, like, white people, right? And they, mm-hmm. they do the same things that, like, it like they do in this movie. Like, you know, a lot of them, if they're, like, an Ivy League, going, like, private colleges or private schools or whatever, like, they do well or not. <laughs> but in, right. in, I liked how they portrayed it, even though, like, it's stereotyped. Like, it was, um, it was true to... Like most Asian American, Asian Americans' right. experiences in high school, I liked right. that they portrayed that well. Like even though we, like, want to do well and stuff like that, like there's also this like other side of doing well academically. Like you want to let off steam and you know, regardless. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I think that's interesting because then it also like puts the high the Asian American high schoolers like aren't able to be like a part of like the geek click or like the jock click you know Mm -hmm. like whereas like in in more white high school films there's like a very very clear distinction of like all the different groups and stuff like that but for asian americans just kind of like we're part of all of them yeah we kind of do yeah there's there's an asian american (laughs) for every type of click i guess right yeah right Or, or not just that but like usually asian americans are floaters and they float in like every click mm-hmm. you know that's true i f- yeah because i think cause, i like, floated throughout in, a few clicks yeah because yeah. like in our youth group for example like in, in sacramento like everybody even if people didn't play ball people played ball people played league of legends people played video games people you know like liked anime like it's just it's just all stuff yeah. you know that that like that you all do and i feel like this is this is the asian in us you know that that we're we're not bound to any sort of like click or one thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. There's no one real particular scene because I never really had that <laughs> that craziness in high school, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what were you like in high school? Uh, stuck at home most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I did play tennis for a little bit. Um, but for the most part, I just didn't do anything. I don't know. I guess I just never, just never got around to me that I wanted to do anything. Uh, not until college. That's when I started doing more stuff. But, um, mm. but yeah, there's actually, there's no particular scene. Actually, nothing really stood out to me to really relate to my own experience. But the thing is, though, I, like, I, I've seen, like, I, I know people who, who've gone through that stuff and I, I've seen that, you know what I mean? But I've never mm. personally gone through it. So I can't really say as to, like, how it relates to my own experience but i definitely see it relate to other people's experience my experience is pretty similar to um what was shown minus all the violence crazy party drugs and stuff but academically i mean i wasn't the smartest but i hung out with a lot of smart people (laughs) who did a lot of extracurricular activities um i did some of that stuff in high school but i wasn't I don't think it wasn't until my junior, senior year. That's when I really got involved in 
Key Club. Yearbook. Key Club, Yearbook. That was kind of like the only things I was really involved with and had a lot of... That kind of took up a lot of my time because for Key Club, you had to volunteer like on weekends and stuff. And Yeah, Key Club yeah. was also just Asian yeah, Club. Yeah, it was basically an <laughs> Asian Club. That's funny because even though there was Asian Club, I was in it. I wasn't ever really involved in stuff. Like I wasn't a leader or anything. I was just kind of in it. I don't know why because all of my friends were in it. So I was like, whatever, sure, I'll be in it. And I mean, and the partying, I didn't party. I went to a few parties, but I don't, I stayed for like 30 minutes and then I left. You know what I mean? I never mm-hmm. like took part in drinking or whatever <laughs> people were doing. I don't know if people were doing drugs. I'm sure they were, but I had no idea. <laughs> but yeah, so that, I could relate to that part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan? Mm. I have nothing to add. <laughs> right? There's, like, no particular scenes, right? Because it's so, well, like... Well, I mean, like, not just scenes, but just, like, thoughts in general, too. Yeah. You know? But, oof. but uh, I don't know. The movie kind of, uh... I wouldn't say over-exaggerate, but... Um, dramatic? It's it's Well, it's dramatic for good reason, right? It's, it's a movie. But um, it does definitely dramatize a lot of our... It's not always like that, you know. Yeah, like, like I mean, all you don't, life is. Over, I mean, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Ex- exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to relate to any other experiences. Oh, I have something. Um, one of the characters, Virgil, he like, even though, like, in most like white films, Asian people are portrayed. There's always that like one character, right? Like the the token Asian who is kind of dumb and like outspoken or I don't know just funny looking right and Virgil was kind of that but he but then he was also really smart but then he also did really stupid things you know what I mean so (laughs) he was the token quote-unquote stereotypical Asian in this film I think in particular so yeah yeah I I just remembered Virgil I mean, I, I liked his character. I thought he definitely brought... <laughs> I did not like his character. <laughs> I, I, I thought he brought a lot of, like, humor to the scenes and stuff. And the there was a scene where I, I remember they were all in the car. I can't remember what they did right before. I think they were at a party or something. And then they were in the car and... Oh, okay, I remember what happened. They were at a party and they got into a little fight. And then I think Virgil takes out a pulled gun. gun. He pulled a gun or something. Yeah. And then after that, they all left again in the car. And then, like, they look next to him, next to the car, and it's, like, you know, these, like, Mexican gangsters, gangsters. all up in their car, <laughs> and Virgil's just like, yeah, like, I totally, like, brought a gun, and did you see his face? And, you know, he was just kind of, like, bragging, basically. And yeah. everyone else in the car is just, like, looking down. They're like, oh, my God, Virgil, shut up. Like, do you not <laughs> see what's happening right now? Like, and, yeah, I feel like, I can't remember... What else happened? Did he ever stop talking in that scene? I don't think so. <laughs> he just uh, kept I, I going. Thought, I thought it was Derek who brought the gun out. Was it Derek? Oh, somebody yeah. brought the gun I think out. It was okay, Derek, it was yeah. Derek, yeah, and then they all started Derek. fighting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It was Derek. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know why it, I brought it up, but it just seemed very familiar. I mean, I've never been in a car with someone who had a gun, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, they're just like sometimes there are just situations where you're just like. You have a friend, and they like are really just oblivious to things. Yeah, like, like to the current social yeah, dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, bro, like, like, shut up, dude. Like, come on. <laughs> I would have said something if I was, or like at least like nudged him. But mm-hmm. yeah, that scene just popped up to my mind. I, yeah. Would you guys want this film to be remade? No. <laughs> I think it's fine the way it is. Yeah, I don't think, I think... it needs to be remade. Um, yeah. If it does get remade, hmm. I don't think a remake is appropriate. It's you're almost like better off just re- not retelling the exact same story, but you can just tell the tell a similar experience, but in current modern times. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just more up to date, I guess, because um, there's a lot you, more stuff that you can probably add to it now. Do you think you could like stay in that timeline though, and make re- make it, but stay in that same time? Mm. Oh, oh, like like the, that same um, yeah yeah era. Um, I guess yeah. Yeah, I think so. Kind of like how, um, 
like the American Pie, <laughs> the American Pie stories, how they're all like from one to another, but they're still kind of like in the same yeah like time frame mm-hmm. timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I can see that. Just yeah. make it like that. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like if we they were to remake it in modern times or today's times, the experience would be, I think, a little different. Because yep, I mean we I don't agree. we right. don't know uh, the experience, but like. I don't, but then I don't have any, yeah. I don't know anyone who's in that age bracket that's in high school that could tell us what was going on or what their experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know anybody anymore. Yeah. Like, all the youth that I mentored. They're all in college they're, or they're out. They're all in college yeah. now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, see, like this kind of film is what Yappy should have been. That's <laughs> like, like yeah, this film did Yappy, it. Yeah, yeah. Yappy is more for like now, like. You grew I, I, up I from yeah, from yeah. better luck tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, this I, is after like, twist. The, 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 same the, the world. Way, <laughs> the, the way better luck tomorrow like ex, like kind of show you it showed everything without really like saying anything without you know having I mean? to tell us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I think. This is what Yappy was should have been, but it wasn't. Mm. That's what I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if anything, like they already had a. They have a blueprint. <laughs> Just make it dramatic, <laughs> over dramatic. It's fine. <laughs> okay, awesome. Let's move on to soul searching. First thoughts, I guess, on soul searching. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, let me go first. <laughs> okay, when I sure. watched this, when I was rewatching this film, I forgot how hilarious it was. Like, it is is such a funny film to me. I don't know. I was laughing out loud. On like, maybe it's my type of humor, you know, but. I, I thought I thought it was just so funny. And then I also uh cried like a baby, like on two of the scenes. Yeah, I, so, I know I think um, I know which two scenes you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe three. Like like maybe Yeah, three like scenes. two to three scenes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, but I, I it was just so funny. Like the opening scene where they're like walking out of the airport. That and, was like, hilarious. Each, yeah, each one of the different like korean people coming out like <laughs> represents kind of just like a different like type of like you know like culture like, that, 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 that yeah. uh, culture yeah. that they grew up in yeah right yeah. right it's just so funny it's just, i was like yeah, oh you my just god see, like even though like you're in america and but it depends on where you grow up like you're influenced by whatever right, ever you are right yeah and it's funny because we all have friends where we can categorize them into each one yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought it was really funny right off the bat, like the the airport scene where they're all coming out. I thought it was super funny, and just like, and then when one of the characters, um, Sergio, <laughs> <laughs> Sergio, yeah, I really, oh God, I really liked that. <laughs> you know, obviously there's like Korean American, but then I loved that they also showed like Korean German, Korean Mexican. Uh-huh. Like I loved <laughs> yeah. that. I thought that was hilarious. Like I didn't know whether to laugh at it or like <laughs> should i be like is that racist <laughs> like, i don't know i don't know how to feel about it and oh then yeah gosh, and then i did a little yeah. research and i was like ah okay 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 okay. Mm-hmm. so but yeah that was my first impression i really liked it i thought it was funny yeah, yeah same here i liked it a lot it kind of like a roller coaster of emotions that's what this film definitely does makes you mm-hmm. laugh makes you cry makes you do a lot of things um i, I liked it a lot for sure uh, really really good cast of characters like i was really yeah. impressed how like likable all the characters are uh, mm-hmm. it takes a little while to warm up to sid i think but uh you start to feel for him uh towards like as the film keeps going but yeah i like the film a lot mm-hmm. yeah i loved that it had a lot of 80s vibes since it was set in 1986 so let mm-hmm. had a lot of john hughes vibes like breakfast club and mm-hmm. Yeah, it just reminded me a lot of Breakfast Club, especially Sid, and then the main character from um, Breakfast Club. <laughs> like, so it kind of just like like it was like ba- I felt like it was bouncing off of that kind of like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. feel mm-hmm. that vibe. So I and then of course, I mean there were a few scenes like towards the end where it just there were like I think the scenes that you want to talk about, Jonathan that made you cry <laughs> like it <laughs> like there was a scene like a moment like that too like in the breakfast club well, between the mm. principal was it the principal is it a vice principal in breakfast club i think it's the principal okay the principal and like the the main guy the main character like the the rebel the dude. rebel guy yeah, yeah there was kind of like a similar scene but i mean the principal was kind of more harsh and 
Yeah. So it, it didn't it didn't really hit you though. This yeah, one it didn't. Hit me, yeah, like, it right didn't really hit you. But then you just <laughs> for in the Breakfast Club, you just feel for the rebel character. Yeah. 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 You could talk about that scene. I think we all talked about our first impressions. Okay. Um, yeah, that scene where uh, Mr. Kim, his teacher, he talks to Sid about like he's about to get kicked out, quote unquote, from the summer camp. And um, he asks him, like, is there anything you want to tell me? And and then they just go into this conversation of like each other's lives a little bit, just talking about Sid's dad. And and then the teacher kind of um, telling his own story of his son and uh, the death of his son. So you kind of just really like in that moment, just really feel just like the like for Asian Americans or any immigrant, most a lot of immigrants it could be a lot of like it could be relatable to a lot of immigrants who have like come from different countries into the united states just like that your parents growing up in a different country being raised differently and then you know coming here and it's like like try to convey the same values and things like that onto their children and um yeah that scene just made you like (laughs) your heart was just like (laughs) yeah Mm-hmm. Right, yeah right yeah you guys can go more in depth into it if you want uh i, I like that a lot it's very um what you call it like you, you don't you don't really get those many moments in general like like even in real life <laughs> even 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 in real life and even like in films like this you just don't get these kind of moments where it's like where the characters are, are pretty much being real like to themselves and to each other um, and I think, yeah, this, 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 this scene was really, really well done. Um, cause I, I, I personally relate to it a lot too. So I, 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 I definitely feel for, I definitely feel for Sid for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause Sid is just kind of like super misunderstood. Um, mm-hmm. tries his best to, you know, live up to his dad's expectations, but then his dad is just ready to tell him that he's wrong in every way. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just tired of it. Yeah. Um, and then Mr. Kim essentially was kind of doing the same thing to him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was such a good scene. I definitely mm-hmm. cried in that one, but I cried harder <laughs> at the one um, with, oh my gosh, I don't remember her name. Chris. Um, Chris. Yeah. Chris. Chris and her mom in mm-hmm. the cafe. Yeah. Yeah. Not at the, not at the Korean barbecue, but yeah. at the cafe mm-hmm. one. That one was so hard to watch for me. Just because, like, you know, there's this idea of, like, shame. So, okay, look, for our viewers, Chris is a Korean-American who was adopted as a child. And she is going to the summer camp. And when she's there, she wants to meet her birth mom. And so a friend of hers um, takes her to go see her birth mom. The first meeting was really bad. So she sets up another meeting with her birth mom. And at that one, she doesn't know how to speak Korean. So she's just speaking English to her. And essentially, the mom, the birth mom, her, Chris's birth mom had to had to give her up because, like, uh, because Chris's dad was really abusive. And so Chris's dad was really abusive. And so she had to run away. And they found out that, like, like she, she just had to give her up. There was no choice. And there's that she, she had to keep Chris a secret from her real family, too. The mom did. And so... It was just so sad because, like, she had no choice, you know? Like, she has to keep it a secret. and But then she also loves her daughter so much, you know? Um, and just that sacrifice that she had to make so that her daughter could have a better life. Like, you know, it was just, it was just really sad. Like, I was, I was crying like a baby. <laughs> when the mom, like, got on her knees and started, like, crying, it was just really sad. We forgot to intro the film. Like yeah, I saw I saw your chat. <laughs> I I'll, I'll do a I'll I'll just do a quick synopsis and I'll. Soul Searching is a movie set in 1986 where, and this is based on a true story. These summer camps actually happened, but because of the first wave of, of Korean immigrants that came over to the United States because of the Korean War, their children were growing up and their children knew nothing about Korean culture and they also did not know how to speak Korean. The majority of them. And so what the Korean diaspora did was they sent their kids to South Korea to these summer camps where they would learn everything about Korean culture. They would learn everything about Korean language. And um, 
yeah and, and and this movie follows one one of those summer camps and and one particular group of kids um that's kind of the basic gist of this film and you have like these amazing characters who you kind of just follow along and then their journey through their own soul searching <laughs> <laughs> soul. Soul. yeah it's the best way to describe it i agree <laughs> yeah yeah that's kind of the basic gist of the film without going into too much detail so another character klaus he's a uh, korean german but he speaks like korean german and english and he acts as like chris's translator for this for a uh, translator and friend to this particular uh scene and um klaus asks chris like 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 so like just because you, you you find out about like your origin where you came from like wh- what are you gonna do with it you know and then um that's always like like a very interesting thing too because it's like well even if you do find out where you came from and what happened and everything what is it gonna do to you you know does it just like wrap up a piece of yourself that you you felt like has never been solved or do you just keep looking to the future and just don't think about it you know um and so i think that part really got me thinking about like stuff like that it's like you know do things do things like that need to be resolved at all or regardless of that question for chris though like for her it it meant a lot for her because she grew up in a uh, caucasian family you know because she was adopted so she felt like she needed to at least resolve that part of her of herself um and so I, i really liked that part yeah i feel like for chris you could tell off the bat that yeah what's that other girl sarah her roommate or something like, she was really into Klaus, but you, I was like, you already know, like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like, Chris is going to be the one that kind of, like, sneaks up, like, unintentionally and kind of, like, whisk him away. <laughs> um, yeah, I really liked her character. Her character, uh, I feel like at times, like, her her facial expressions, I know is part of her character. She was very, like, right. emotionless <laughs> and yeah. kind of, like, nonchalant throughout the whole film. <laughs> Yeah, and there was mm-hmm. very little times where you saw like a smile on her face. <laughs> so yeah, I liked her character a lot. I think my favorite character is Sergio. <laughs> 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 he was just oh my he gosh. was just so funny. He brought like something so different to the table and something unexpected. <laughs> like I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Did he totally surprise you when? Uh... Did that scene where he, they introed him was that super surprising? Yeah, he was like you? Sergio. Sergio is his last name Kim or Park or something. I was like, what the heck? I, I was like, I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he would like start oh, speaking in Spanish, I thought that was even more hilarious. I was just like, oh man, this is I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> this is just hands down so funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's probably my favorite character. <laughs> Oh, yeah man. i actually like all three of them the the, the roommates yeah uh, sid klaus and sergio mm-hmm. they uh mm-hmm. they bring a very good dynamic out of each other yeah they, they so balance different. each other yeah yeah they balance each other really really well um <laughs> i really, really like that um i think my favorite scene though is when they went to the club <laughs> they went to the club <laughs> they, went to the, they went to the nightclub just to check it out um and it's funny because i've heard that in korea they're like they're a little late on things in terms of like trends because of uh, just the way uh, trends are set kind of like if the united states is in the 80s everywhere uh, everywhere else is kind of like in the 70s just because you know things spread out kind of slow slower so when they went to the club it was 1986 and i looked at it i was like yo that club's like they're in the 70s i'm like yeah that's yeah. true it is because <laughs> they are and so right. um because i remember hearing that like in the night when we were in the 90s the korean was in the 80s which is why all their music was, was kind of slow it was like a little like trendier a little different mm. and so the whole time when they were, <laughs> they were in the club and then and then the 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 boss guy <laughs> goes and you know just tells them <laughs> just starts like lecturing them and then klaus yeah. responds back in korean but like the <laughs> different answer yeah. oh man it's so funny so hilarious i thought it was great <laughs> I, I really really love that scene yeah yeah that, that scene was funny i thought another scene that was funny was the fight scene at towards the end where like they meet up with the japanese tour group yeah. oh yeah, yeah that scene was funny when they're in the hanak <laughs> village i thought that was yeah, yeah. hilarious i'm like this wouldn't be 80s film without a fight <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they put they played Hey Mickey in the back. Yeah, I love that too. I think that was probably like one of my favorite scenes. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, all the Japanese girls, like, they all hide and they don't fight. But then the Korean <laughs> girls were, like, all up in Punching their faces and, like, yeah, fighting yeah, yeah. and yeah. stuff. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was funny. Yeah. And then, like, an, another scene that was just very 80s-esque was, I'm going to spoil it, spoiler alert, okay, when Klaus goes running after <laughs> after uh, Chris, after she gets in the taxi. Yeah. Like, then yeah. he realizes, like, oh, I do love her, you know, <laughs> even though he has a girlfriend. <laughs> Jason's like, what about the girlfriend? I'm like, who cares? He's in love, okay? <laughs> He's in love with her, so let them be together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah man. that was like definitely very 80s-esque and then when he tripped and fell i was like oh god <laughs> yeah and it's funny because the two friends were like running after two yeah like, oh my god catch he's her. gonna and do then, it like, yeah and then when they <laughs> caught up then they, they saw the two and they're like oh wait, wait 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 and then they just like stood there while the two of them were just talking that was funny they're like let's leave him alone <laughs> leave him alone Oh man! Yeah, yeah, that movie is freaking hilarious. Yeah, it's it was very <laughs> funny. Yeah, and then I looked up a little like tidbits and stuff after about the movie. I didn't know it played at Sundance, um, and the, I read mm. a review where they kind of, they talked a little bit about they compared it to Better Luck Tomorrow. They compared it a little bit to it, and yeah, I was just like, wow! I'm surprised that this didn't get any like traction yeah any traction after it came out yeah yeah Yeah, they they do a really good job because it's like it kind of just goes to show you that like with this korean diaspora it kind of just affects everyone too like asian diaspora too Mm -hmm. um because it's like wherever you are wherever you grow up that's kind of like that's what makes that's what turns you into you know who you are at that point you know even though you are from originally from somewhere else from wherever like Kind of like how I guess the big thing that that stood out was when the Korean teachers were poor, putting expectations and values on all these kids who've never experienced that growing up. You know what I mean? It just kind of goes to show you that different culture shock, that totally different culture clash right there. And these aren't just Korean Americans; these are these kids are from everywhere, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I really, really liked that because it didn't just touch on uh, the American aspect; just all the other cultures too. So, mm-hmm. um, I. I think one thing I wanted to mention was I thought about this also like in a Hmong con- context. Like, you know, how Hmong people, we were kind of dispersed everywhere too, similar to like Korean Americans or Koreans in general. So I'm like, I was like, how come we didn't ever get a camp? I mean, not like they could send us back to like our home country because we don't have one. But I'm like, <laughs> where would they send us to? <laughs> 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 or Hit like all the hot spots, so yeah. Much, Thailand, Laos. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where would they send us to? Maybe back to like our parents' home country, you know? Or they would hold one, like they would hold one in Fresno, and they would hold one Minnesota. in like Wisconsin yeah. or Minnesota. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, now that I think about, it, I'm like, that could have been cool, but growing up, we probably would have hated we it. Hated yeah, it I mean, we so would have hated it so much, and we not probably like, hated it. you know, appreciated yeah. it for what it was, but right. Why don't we do it now? <laughs> <laughs> Monk summer camp. Oh my gosh. It'd be terrible. It would just turn into a meat market. There was one character we didn't mention yet. It was... Ooh, shoot, I forgot his name. The military guy? Mm. Yeah, like his character, he was just very like macho, like in your face. And, you know, he had to be mas- the most masculine person yeah, there, you know? Super masculine, yeah. And... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but that was kind of the way he was, you know, um, raised how, yeah, how he was raised, His character basically, was raised yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like he's comes from, yeah. I don't, a military family, I'm guessing. Uh, uh mil- or he, he was raised in a military base. Okay. Yeah. He's like yeah. the only Korean American in the military base that he was in. Okay. So he had to be super tough. Yeah. And kind of, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I like that his character had a little redemption at the end. Not even a yeah. lot, just like mm-hmm. a little bit. But uh, I thought yeah. his character yeah. was mentionable. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. Um, I didn't I w- I didn't really like his character at first either. But then, like, as soon as he kind of explained a little bit, I'm like, okay, that, that makes sense. I understand that. Um, because, like, even though we may we do not give the best first impressions to certain people, like, kind of like the way we are the way we are is because of i guess circumstances that surround us you know mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. <clears throat> man there's something else i wanted to mention too oh i liked how the actors are actually from where they're from 
Oh yeah, yeah. They didn't yeah. just like, hey you, yeah, yeah. Do you can you do a yeah, Spanish yeah. accent? Like, yeah, can <laughs> yeah. you do a Mexican accent? Yeah. yeah. Um, Klaus's actor, his actor is from Germany, yeah. and uh, Sergio's character is from Spain. Yeah. So. Yeah. Jason. Jason <laughs> looked up Klaus's character or the actor. And Jason's like, oh my god, he was thirty five when he played this. I was like, dang, you really don't raise it. I was like, dang, okay. Even in um. In Better Luck Tomorrow, the the main character for uh, the main character, he was 28 when he played that character. Tell you, really? Yeah. <laughs> he was born in not look 28. He was 28 when he played that character. What? That's crazy. <laughs> okay. I know. I remember what I was gonna say. I was very surprised that they used the N word. Oh yeah, I was yeah, yeah. very surprised. I was like, oh, I was not expecting this. Um, Asians be doing that though. I mean, though. yeah, I know Asians do that, but or I'm sure any other race does. They do that in general. But I was just very surprised that it was on the screen and they chose to right. use that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I I know I know I know plenty of people who who do yeah that and word, yeah. yeah. I feel like it's just it's just a thing. It's a it's, it's just a thing. Yeah. I yeah. don't think it's right, but yeah, it's just a thing. Yeah. 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 Everybody has their own their own preferences <laughs> what's that one that one short you talked about instead of the n-word they use something else my ninja nin- yeah ninja, ninja. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one's funny we should start using that i'm just ninja. kidding <laughs> it's funny what did jason think of the film i think he liked it too i thought yeah he was oh he didn't he didn't say his thoughts at the end no of it. he didn't say his thoughts at the end of it he 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 sat there with me and watched through most of it while on his phone oh, okay. yeah yeah Oh. Yeah, so he didn't really watch the whole thing with me. But um yeah, I think he liked it too. He thought it was funny. Yeah. yeah it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. The scene where at the end where they're at the dance and Sergio comes in with the red dress. Yeah. It's so freaking hilarious. I was like, why is he wearing a red dress right now? <laughs> it's a costume See, party. I'm telling you. Sergio's oh, the man. best character. Plus, plus it, was, it was funny when Klaus and Sid swapped costumes. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. funny. So they swapped each outfits. Other. I was like, who's what, huh? What? Oh, they yeah. switched. Yeah. <laughs> they switched. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I'm like I feel like we're just I'm just mentioning all the characters now, but okay. um what's what's her face? Sujin. Is that her name? The one uh, that wants a wannabe Madonna. No, that's no. no that's the other wannabe girl. Madonna. Who's what's her name? What's the character? I don't remember. Pastor's her name. kid. Yeah, the pastor. Yeah, the pastor's kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I liked I liked that they also brought in her character just because I'm pretty sure like when she is home like that's not how she dresses. I right. mean, it could be, like, without her parents I doubt knowing. It. <laughs> but, yeah, I liked that they brought that into, like, most like most Koreans are, like, Christian. So, you know, her yeah. her and her family coming to the States, her dad is a pastor. So, I mean, it's very true to <laughs> a lot of Korean Americans, I'm sure. And I liked, so, like, so, like her just, just kind of rebelling in a way and living a, a double life or, you know, li- wanting to live as someone else. Like, not right. at home. I thought that was good to see on the screen, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they, they put in, they insert, like, in the film, they insert really funny random bits into it, too. Like, uh, like she did a cover of Like a Virgin from Madonna. Yeah. And she made the twins dance in yeah. the background. <laughs> <laughs> and then she got into this really, like, um, like sexual pose. And then she was, like, thrusting. And the girls, the twins were just like, uh, what's happening right now? <laughs> It was so funny. <laughs> cool. Any other thoughts? No, I don't think so. No? Yeah. So that about wraps up our episode. Um, we're doing kind of shorter episodes because um, we're going to be releasing multiple episodes, uh, more than usual. Um, so if you haven't seen Soul Searching or Better Luck Tomorrow, now is your chance to see it. It is also APIA Heritage Month, so... I feel like it is, uh, it's kind of like your, your duty. It's your duty. Your duty, yeah. Your obligation to like uh, step in and um, learn. Honor, yeah. Learn and honor your Asian American brothers and sisters. Um, or bring shame to your family. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, but yeah, um, definitely um, watch these films because they're really well done and they are just you know amazing for what they are and you know 
everybody and their mom has a Netflix account that is shared by someone else and their mom. So I'm pretty sure you could, you have access to soul searching somewhere um, and definitely watch it. It's super funny and super heartwarming. Um, you will definitely laugh and cry um, in, in soul searching and then better luck tomorrow is just pretty dramatic. So just put your seatbelt on and um, get ready for the ride. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and thank you all for tuning in to this uh, very special episode of The Outside Story. My name is Jonathan. I'm Jessica. And I'm Larry. See you next time. Bye. Bye.